Welcome, Word of Faith, and our online viewers. My name is Quentin Lozano, and I'm one of the worship leaders here at Word of Faith. In just a few minutes, we're about to begin our worship service, but I wanted to take a brief moment to talk to you about one of the ways we worship. So often when we think about worship, we think about worship songs and worship music, but worship is more than music. Worship is about honoring God. And one of the ways we honor God is through our giving. Now, Proverbs chapter three teaches us that when we honor God by giving him the first and best portion of everything we own, that God will cause every dimension of our lives to overflow with blessings. That means that when we honor God with our giving, God will supply all of our needs. My prayer for you is that you would have a heart that is willing to honor God with your giving. Will you partner with us today by worshiping God through your giving? On your screen, you'll find all the different ways you can give. But when you do, remember that when you honor God by giving Him your first and your best, that God will supply all of your needs. Now let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all those who are giving today. Pray that you would multiply seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Bless the giver in Jesus' name. Good morning. Welcome to Word of Faith this morning. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. You got your smiles on. You got your praise ready. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Get ready to worship this morning. You are overcomers. The Holy Spirit is here already moving in this place. Amen. Are you ready to receive this morning? Turn to someone and tell them you have come to the right place at the right time. Thank you, Lord. Oh 
on, someone say hallelujah this morning. We come to bless you this morning, Lord. There's none like you in heaven and earth. Thank you, Jesus. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. Come on, sing that. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah.
you, Jesus. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord? You know, we serve an awesome Savior. And it's always good to remind ourselves, you know, God has done so many things for us. But it's always good to remind us what the prophet Isaiah told us, and that is that he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him, but by his stripes we are healed. We thank you, God, that you are a healing God. That you bore our sickness, you bore our shame, you bore our transgressions, God. And we don't ever want to lose sight of that, God. We don't ever want to just think that you have good things to say to us because we already know that. But we never want to forget. We always want to remind ourselves that you are risen, God. And that you, are, you, have, you have bore our sickness, God. How many, how, if, I don't know if anybody's in need of healing this morning. But I believe that there's power in the word of God. I believe that there's power in the name of Jesus. That when we speak the name of Jesus, demons have to flee. Sickness has to flee. Poverty has to flee. Come on, just say the name Jesus. Come on, say Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can take us to the next key. Are we there? Praise the Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we have been raised by your power. We thank you, Lord, that because you have been raised, we can be raised too. We thank you for your resurrection power this morning, God.
Somebody Loves You Ministry, where we go out and we follow the Holy Spirit's leading on who we want to bless. We give them a Someone Loves You track and a gift as well. Father's Day is next week Sunday. Come out, help us celebrate the fathers. Word of Faith Youth Camp at Phantom Ranch Bible Camp is coming up August 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Teens starting at the age of 12 are welcome to sign up. They can sign up on the website or you can see me after church. There's also a form that needs to be filled out and I'll have that available after the service. It's 190 per student or 150 per camp leader. Sunday, June 26th is Sundays with Sarah. Bring the kids out. They're going to have so much fun this week. Also happening that week is our graduation service. If you've graduated from high school, a technical college, or college, we want to celebrate you. Join us. Um, for that service, June 26th at 10 a.m. You can sign up online for that as well. So give a shout to Jesus and welcome our pastor to the stage. All right, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I look like you're ready this morning. All right, since you're ready, I'm, I'm going to try to be ready. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, we always start with the confession of faith, and let me explain it one more time. Jesus is called the Word of God, John 1.1. 1, 1. And the Word of God said in Revelation, he said, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. So our alphabet comes from him, the A to Z. And anything you do in life, I suggest you pray about it, get the Word of God on it. You know, start with the Word and end with the Word. And you're la- everything, you know, I'm not saying there's not going to be any problems, but everything will turn all right. Because God said, all things work together for good. Say it with me. All things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Amen. So today we're going to talk about breaking the sight and sound barrier. There's a lot of stuff going on around us. But first of all, I want to start in Genesis chapter 13 from the New Living Translation, uh, verse 14 and 15. It says, after Lot had gone... King James says, after Abraham had separated from him, the Lord said to Abram, look as far as you can see in every direction, north and south, east and west. I am giving all this, I'm giving all this land as far as you can see to you and your descendants as a permanent possession. Well, Galatians 3.29 says, if you're born again, if you're Christ, you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So whatever promise was given to Abraham is something that's given to us as well. Amen. We know to possess what, what we see. You know, the word lot, you know, if you study it very closely, it means a veil or a covering or a hindrance. And so a lot had been a hindrance to Abram because now he had to take care of this guy. He had to do all kinds of things. So he was a veil to him and, and it, it, it stopped him from, and God would not go give him everything until he got rid of this guy. I know they were related, but he didn't want lot holding him back. And I believe that, you know, many people have a lot in their life, somebody that hinders them, somebody that influences them. You know, in other words, well, I think you should do this. 
well, I think you should do that. Or maybe this is what you should do. And on and on it goes where somebody's influencing your life. And you may not know, but that may be a lot in your life that causes you to see how far you can really go. Because as soon as you come up with something that you believe, they, they tell you, well, I don't know about that. And so they, they influence you like a lot would have influenced a Abram, or he, which later was Abraham. Well, here's a good question. How far can you see? How far is it you can see? Well, let me give you an illustration here. It was a, a defense attorney who was uh, questioning a witness about a crime. He was defending his, of course, his client. And so he was actually trying to trip him up because he's defending his client. Uh, so he asked the witness, did you actually see the defendant commit the crime? And the witness says, yes, I did. He said, well, tell me about it. Tell me what, what you saw, when it was, and so forth. He says, well, it was about, about 11 o'clock at night. And, uh, you know, he says, well, how far were you from him? He said, about 50 feet. He said, okay, so you're telling me that it's 11 o'clock at night, it's dark outside, and you're 50 feet away, and yet you saw the defendant. He said, that's right. He said, well, just tell me, just how far do you think you can see at night? And he said, I don't know. How far is it to the moon? <laughs> you see, perception. How far can you see? You may be limited to the natural world, but God has much more for us. You know, he has much more for us, you know, to see. We live in a planet, planet Earth, that is limited in time, distance, resources, and a lot of limitations. But the kingdom of God that we, you and I belong to, is an unlimited kingdom with unlimited resources. It's an eternal kingdom. Uh, and, and the only way to mine these resources is through your faith. Mark 9, 23, Jesus said, he was, they, the disciples couldn't cast out this, the devil out this little boy. And Jesus tells the father, which we get back to later, he said, if you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. You hear that? All things are possible if you believe. You know, so there may be barriers in your life that cause you to see as far as God wants you to see. Uh, for instance, like the pike fish, they put a pike fish in a tank. And in the tank, they put a bunch of minnows in that, in that, in that tank. You know, his favorite little food, minnows, delicious little fish that he could eat. And so he was just having the time of his life eating all these little minnows. And so one day in the middle of that tank, they put a, a, a clear glass right in the middle of it. And then the minnows on the other side. So every time he would try to go eat those minnows, he'd bang his head up against that glass. Bam. <laughs> they, they kept this up for a while. And then they took out the, uh, the glass. And you know what? That pike fish starved. With all those little minnows swimming around him, he starved because somebody put a barrier in its mind that he could not eat minnows. Eating minnows would cause you pain. So that's, that's all. He starved with all these delicious fish around him, and he's starving. And see, so what, what happens to a lot of people, there's barriers that society puts on you, people put on you, parents maybe, or education, or whatever, physical limitations, all kinds of barriers that are around us that we need to break through. Now, there's uh, one vision, one barrier, barrier to the vision is not believing. Because believing creates the possibility for you to have what you desire. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible. Vi also, another limitation for, uh, for seeing, is, uh, living your dream is feelings. Whether you believe it or not, your feelings will hinder you from seeing what God wants you to have. Because Colossians 3, let me quote it, says, Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth, for your life is hid in Christ. All right? So he's trying to tell you, don't, don't set your feelings on things of the earth. But set your affection or your feelings or your mind on things that are above, things that are greater than your feelings. Another hindrance to, or limitation or barrier to living your dream is lack of clarity. In other words, you, you don't have a clear vision. Uh, 
Oh, you know, the, the only time that, that, uh, that Jesus laid hand on, on, on a man twice had to do with his vision. I, I believe that was Mark chapter number six, or one of these chapters. He, uh, the, the, the blind man comes to him and he lays hands on him and he says, do you see? And he says, well, I see men walking as trees. So he laid hands on him again. But it had to do with vision because vision is so important to all of us. We know from Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, it says that the people perish. So God tells Abraham, or Abram at the time, look as far as you can see. I mean, don't, don't hold back as far as you can see, because you've got to see it before you see it. Now, that doesn't sound correct, but you know what I'm talking about. You've got to see what you want before you see it before it manifests. Like King David in Psalm 27, where he said, I had believed to see. All right? Because believing is part of seeing. That's faith. Now, so the, the Proverbs 29 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. So think about this. Think about your life. Think about your own personal life. If Say you're looking for a house. Which house would you rather live in? Or... Uh, what, what, is, what does your body look like to you when you close your eyes? How big is the business that you want? How big do you want it to get? How much money do you believe or see in your account or God bringing to you? Because first of all, Jesus said this in Mark 2, 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the sick of the palsy, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And we know that that man was healed. So the question is, can Jesus see your faith? Can he see it? Is your vision written down somewhere? Like Habakkuk chapter 2 in the message translation, it says, and God answered, write this, write what you see. Write it out in big block letters so that it can be read on the run. The vision message is a witness pointing to what's coming. It aches for the coming. It can hardly wait. Now watch what he says. And it doesn't lie. If it seems slow in coming, wait. It's on the way. It will come right on time. Amen. But again, you've had to have seen it first. Then second, you'd have to put it down somewhere. Because if you believed it, you'd have put it down. Isn't that true? It's when you're buying a house. You really want it. You put a down payment on it. Because you believe it's yours. And if, 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 if you're trying to buy a house and say, well, you need a down payment. Now, I don't want to put no down payment on it. Well, then you really don't want it. <laughs> so, but because you, 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 the down payment is, hey, I, I believe it, so I'm going to write it down. I'm going to put it down, put it on paper, just like God did his word. Now, then you've got to expect God to start moving. Philippians 1.20, Paul said, According to my earnest, we could say, or highest, according to my highest expectation and my hope, in nothing I shall be ashamed. So what is hope? hope? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So he said, I'm not going to be ashamed uh, in my expectation. I'm expecting God to do something. See, when you fully expect someone to do something that they said they're going to do, uh, you thank them. Isn't that true? Well, you know, say somebody comes up to me and says, Pastor Lozano, I want to buy you a, a suit or something. And I'll say, well, I'll thank you later when I get it. They, no, that kind of person, well, you know what, well, you ain't getting nothing now because you're ungrateful. You know, so I would I'd say, well, you know, well, thank you. Thank you so much. You know, even though I don't have it, I'd say thank you, you know, because the, I know that the person is going to do it. And so we, we need to be in the habit of thanking and praising God that we're expecting him to do something for us. Lord, I want to thank you and I want to praise you, you know, because praise and thanksgiving is the highest expression of your faith. Your gratitude, you know, in other words, your gratitude to God before the dream comes true, it speaks to God. It tells him there's somebody here that believes me. Somebody like that leper that, that came back and thanked Jesus, he went, he went home whole while the other ones were just healed. Can you imagine? The other ones were healed, the plague stopped. But this one, if, if leprosy had taken out his fingers, his nose, his ears, all of a sudden they all were back. Simply because he had this expression of gratitude 
And he was a Samaritan. He was not a Jew. You know, in other words, he wasn't supposed to believe the Messiah. And so he was made whole. So thanksgiving, praise, all that is the highest expression of your gratitude toward God. Now, I believe you need to do it every day. Be grateful to God on a daily basis, you know, giving him thanks. You know, get in the habit of magnifying God in the mornings and in the, you know, uh, I, you know, when I walk in here in the mornings, it's dark in here because they wanted to black out the sun for me. <laughs> they, they put those curtains up there. You know, I don't mind the sun, but they said it was better for the cameras and you know, whatever. I don't even want to be on cameras, to tell you the truth. And, and so, so I walk in here, and I always, even before that, it's, it's dark in here, but I, I'm, I walk in here every day that I walk in here, whether it's five days a week or seven, I, I just walk in. If I, I used to wear a hat during the week. And I take off my cap and say, thank you, Lord. I want to, but I'm, I've already thanked him in the morning when, before I left the house, before, you know, when I got up and when I prayed, I've thanked him because it's just a habit of mine. And I thank him every day when I come in here. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank you. I want to praise you for what you're doing, giving him thanksgiving. You know, because a grateful heart is like a magnet toward miracles. It'll draw the favor of God. It'll draw the blessing of God. The more you thank him. You know, Norval Hayes said, you can have anything from God as long as you thank him enough. He said, you can have anything from God. Oh, and I remember Norval, man, he was quite a, he said he was a Bible teacher, but, you know, he, he only, he'd only get into one scripture and then, and then tell stories the rest of the time. <laughs> I used to, I, but he, would, he was annoyed at me, I'm telling you. He'd get up there and say, I'm a Bible teacher. And then he, he'd read one scripture and then he, for the rest of the evening, he'd be telling you stories. But there were miracle stories of what was happening in his life, what God was doing in his life. I mean, tremendous miracles. This guy had, before he went on with the Lord, all kinds of stuff going on. So, because vision will prepare you. The vision you have will prepare you for the opportunities that God wants to give you. Coach John Wood, remember him of the, of the UCLA? He said, when opportunity comes, it's too late to prepare. Too late. You're not ready. You're not ready. So now is the time to prepare. Now is the time to be preactive and proactive. You know, the, the word proactive means a person who's always looking into the future in order to, to be prepared for anything. Proactive also means acting in anticipation of future changes. It also means to prepare for an expected occurrence. So what, what did he tell Abraham? Look as far as you can see. I mean, I would have said, Lord, can you invent some binoculars for me? Because <laughs> can, you, can, you, can you put me in a helicopter so I can really see? You know, but, no, but he didn't have all that stuff. But he told him, as far as you can see, Abram, I want you to look. I want you to see as far as you can see. You know, you, you got to keep looking until God says, okay, you got it. Now, one of the things that we, we need to understand that, you know, once We've believed, we've expected, and we've praised God. We've got to act on what we believe. What do you mean act on what you believe? Well, let me read you from the voice translation. James chapter 2, verse 17 says, The same is true with faith. Without actions, faith is useless. By itself, it's as good as dead. Wow. So in other words, your faith is dead, if you don't do what God tells you to do. And, and so an action may, may, may want to, how, how can you say? One of the actions that I, I, I apply, maybe you should all apply, is intentionally hear the word of God on a daily basis. Or let me, let me put it this way, hear the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice? Amen. All right, Romans 10, 17. I know the King James says, faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of God, but that's not the way the Greek text has it. In fact, if you have an American Standard Version, then you, you got a more accurate version, and this is how it says it. So belief, which would be faith, right, comes from hearing and hearing the word of Christ. Have you noticed in the Bible, as you look at the Old Testament, and then you look at the New Testament, that in the Old Testament, there weren't that many, that many, you know, not that many miracles were happening. They were happening, but when Jesus comes on the scene, 
Jeez. After he's anointed by the Holy Ghost after that 40 day fast, and you, especially if you open it up in the book of Mark, miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle begins to happen because they were hearing the word of Christ, what he was saying, be thou made whole. Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Yes, I will be healed. They were hearing the word of Christ. And faith was arising that the woman with, with the issue of blood, she had heard of Christ, Jesus. So she said, that if I may just touch the hem of his garment. Did you get that? She, you know, in the Old Testament, you get, that, you get that, 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 that robe that he was wearing. It had a blue ribbon on the bottom. It represented two things. It represented heaven and it represented the anointing. So the, he would always show up when he'd preach and say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. So she said, if I may just touch that hem, that garment, I'm going to be whole. She heard the word of Christ. When Jesus shows up, miracles shows up. Amen. So, you know, being in the right environment or creating the right environment causes your faith to grow and to flourish. You know, faith is energized, you know, uh, when it hears, uh, when it enters your ear, when it enters your inner ear and it enters your spirit. So whoever has your ear has your faith. Who are you listening to? Because whoever you're listening to has your faith. If you got some preacher that don't know nothing about faith, you ain't going to get faith. You're going to get a bunch of issues and a bunch of other stuff. But you won't get faith. Because faith is made to operate this way. You may hear me teach faith, but if you get a hold of it yourself because you heard it, and then you go look at it yourself, and you get, then you don't need me around. All you got is all you need is that word you heard from Christ. Isn't that true? And Because now Jesus has your ear. So it's a, something that you got to get into on a daily and a weekly basis. You know? And then when God calls you to step out in faith, if, he tell, if, you're, if you're staying in that word and, and God tells you to step out in faith, then you're going to step out on what your faith has been built on and what you've been hearing. Are you listening? Uh, is anybody catching this? Amen. That's why it's very, you know, my, my automobile has a, a little SD card. You can put so many teachers on an SD card, man, just a little bitty thing like that, and you stick it in there. And, you know, but, you know, lately I put something else in there. I put something else in there because, you know, Habakkuk chapter 3, the Amplified Bible says, the prayer of Habakkuk the prophet set to wild, enthusiastic, and triumphal music. Did you get that? Sometimes, you know, people just get so, they get so, you, you, know, you, hey, you can get dry on the word. Oh, it's just all word, word, word. You say, well, that's all I need. No, 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 no. You know, David, when he played that, that, played that harp, played that guitar, man, them devils, they fled. Isn't that true? Because there's such a thing as anointed music. And so lately, I put something else in the car. He said wild, enthusiastic, and triumphal music, right? So I put something wild in there. I, I, I put that, that theme song, Mission Impossible. Remember Tom Cruise, that first one he made? Because <laughs> I'm believing for something, so I put that in there, Mission Impossible. We're going for it. Amen. Yeah. I'm telling you, family. Because you can try to go, oh, that's on scripture. No, no, you just read the book of Habakkuk. It'll, it'll, it'll shut you up. Anyways. <laughs> so when he asks you to do something, you're going you're gonna to respond built upon your faith and what you put inside of you. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, the Amplified Bible says, for out of the fullness, the overflow, the superabundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We need to have so much faith dumped in our spirit, in our heart, that our faith isn't, our, our, we're not moved by circumstances. Our faith is moved only by the word of God. Our, what we do, it moves only through the word of God, not by what we feel, we see, or any of that stuff. It's moved by faith. Amen. That's how much word you've got to have in you. Somebody gives you a report and you just say, I don't care what you say, this is what I believe. Now, we've got to learn to, I'm just, I, you don't have to do it, but I just do it. God, you learn how to play teachings all the time in your car. Like I said, I don't listen to music hardly, but once in a while I put that, that song in there. I just put it in last week. You'll find out later why I did. So you've got to be a prepared person, like John Wooden said. Listen to what it says in Ezekiel 38, verse 7. Get ready. Be prepared. 
you and all the hordes gathered about you and take command of them. There's a hordes of demons and circumstances and all kinds of things coming against God's people in America. So we need to be prepared to come against them and stop them. You got to be prepared. You can't just listen to the news all the time and thinking, or just because you can quote the news, the newscaster, and everybody in America quotes everybody. Everybody in America can repeat everything the newscasters say. But what about the answers that God wants us to say? Well, what is, how does He want us to respond to that? You got to be prepared. You know, pre preparation time is never a time you're going to waste. Zig Ziglar said this. He said, "You don't have to be great to start." But you have to start to be great. Amen. You got to start somewhere. So there's people, there's people in this room right now, you know, you're just, you've been standing on peanut butter, so to speak, you're running and running and running. Your life hasn't changed for a while. You know what I'm talking about, running in peanut butter? <laughs> it's like, you know, going to try to run in on sand at the beach. When we, were, when we were boxing, when we were young, we were boxers. They would tell us, if you really want to build up your resistance, you know, your wind power, put on some heavy construction boots that go down the beach and run. You know? But, and you felt like trying to run in those boots? Man. And that's how a lot of people are in life. They're just sitting there. They're just sitting there. And, they, and they're, 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 not, they're not starting. You need to start. Start today, not tomorrow, today. You know, uh, the, the playoffs are going on. Is the Celtics still playing? How many remember Larry Bird from the Celtics? They say when he was in high school, he'd get up in the morning before school and shoot 500 hoops or free shots before school. 500 <laughs> before he go to school. Well, no wonder he became so great. He was pre when he hits the NBA, he's ready. He prepared. Now, so the question is, what, are gonna, what is it that you and I are going to do? What, are we, what opportunities are we preparing for? It, it's been, this is what they say. People are rewarded in public for what they practice in private. So what you need to do is prepare, be preactive and proactive in what you believe God wants you to be ready for. Because only you know. I don't know what you believe God for. I have no idea. I know what I believe God for, but what do you need a breakthrough for? I mean, what is it you're, what is it you're believing God for, a breakthrough or a change or whatever? Because taking the initiative will open the door to opportunities. You've got to look, expect, and then act. Prepare for that dream uh, in your heart. And, and because I believe this, that God blesses what you prepare for. Now, for instance, People are famous for this. They meet somebody they haven't seen in a while. Let's get together. Oh, yeah, we're going to get together. Let's get together for lunch. Oh, yeah, that's right. But they never set a date. Let's get together next week. Okay. So you go to the restaurant. Where's that person at? Well, you never gave them a date. <laughs> you showed up at the restaurant and they ain't going to show up. Just you go show up. And next time you run into it, you say, hey, I was waiting for you. What do you mean you're waiting for me? You, told, you said we're going to meet next week. But you didn't give me a time. You got to be ready for it. You got to be prepared for it. You know, but let me tell you something before I go any further. Because during the worship time, you know, is uh, when we worship God, worship creates a breakthrough or a, we might say a breakthrough atmosphere uh, where God loves to move. You know, it, it, it breaks the sound barriers, it breaks the vision barriers, it breaks all th those things produce praising work because when you're praising and worshiping God, you're, you're taking yourself out of the mix and you're, you're devoting your time to God. I read something the other day and, and, and I, it, it became part of my thinking that, let, let me ask, can I, can I po poke around, is it okay? Some, do you, some of you ever get irritated and somebody asks you something and you snap back, get snappy. Now, don't act so holy now. You know you've probably done it, right? <laughs> so, but, you know, I found out that it, then when I read that, I realized, you know, that's true. Uh, what I read, and what did I read? It read this. Many times when you're irritated, it's because you left something undone. 
you're feeling guilty. You left the job and you didn't get done. And I, I remember sometimes I'd go home and my wife would say something and I'd snap because I know that I didn't finish what I wanted to finish that day in the office. So I'm feeling guilty about it and that causes me to snap. Causes me to, you know, to get snappy. And it's, it has nothing to do with the other person whatsoever. It's got to do with me. So I got to watch, uh, get myself in an atmosphere where I can worship God enough every day so I don't get in that attitude. Now, praise and worship creates breakthrough anointing. Listen to Acts chapter 16, verse 25 and 26. And at midnight, you know, we could say this is symbolic of anybody's midnight hour. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. That means they weren't having this silent praise. Well, pastor, I got a praise in my heart, but you know, it's in my heart. No, it better be in your mouth. <laughs> and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. You see what happened there? Singing and praising God caused God to move. And it shook that jail. And there, you know, some people don't realize how many miracles there are in the Bible. When Peter was in shackles, see, for me to take my watch off, I got to unzip it. You know, you know what I'm talking about? I, it, just, it just doesn't come off. But they're changed. All of that just came off. In other words, God can cause material things to pass through material things. Isn't that, isn't that something? That the changes fell off. I, I, you, know, you can't do that. It's, it's impossible in the natural until God steps in. God steps in. <coughs> these guys are locked up. They're chained down. He steps in, shakes that prison, and their bands fall off. Whoo, man, I'm talking, we serve a, a miracle working God. <laughs> he does things quickly. He does things suddenly. And, and, and I, I believe that the blessings that he has for us are going to be numerous if you continue to walk by faith and you continue to not to look at the negatives out there, but to look at what he has. Listen to what Amos 9.13 says in the message. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now, God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast, your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everything, everywhere you look, remember how far you can see, everywhere you look, blessings. Blessings like wine pouring out of the mountains and hills. But he didn't say fermented wine. He just said wine. <laughs> oh, Did you get that? Blessing after blessing after blessing. Remember what we read? I'm going to read it again. Job 5. It's beginning to be one of my favorite scriptures. And the message translation says, after all, he's famous for great and unexpected acts. There's no end to his surprises. Has anybody here been surprised by God? I have. Man, it's it where God comes through. Man, it is the biggest surprise of your life, man. He just comes through. <laughs> I remember, it's been a few years now, but I remember just feeling like, my Lord, don't know why anybody help us. But God came through. So I'll help you. I'll help you. The banks would say no. God said, no, nah, son, you just go. <laughs> just do what I tell you. See, because God is always arranging and prearranging things and walk, walking behind the scenes, like he says in the message trans, in, in Isaiah, in, in the message translation, where he says, "You are a God, O oh God, that works behind the scenes." I believe that right now he's working behind the scenes for some of you, or maybe all of you that have believed him for something. He's working behind the scenes. Amen. He's preparing it. He's he worked behind the scenes before you were born. Listen, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, it says, For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born in you, that we may do those good works which God predestined. Here it is, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he, he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Listen, family, listen, husbands and wives, God has prearranged 
a good life for you to live. You're not to compete with each, with each other. You're to complete each other. Are you listening? And he's got that flowing for you. Because see, when you begin to complain in life, it creates barriers in your life. And you, because no, complaints focus on what you can't do or what you don't like. And you could be, so it doesn't create the breakthrough. So you, you got to be prepared for what he prepared ahead of time. You're not a citizen of the United States of America. I mean, I know you are, but more so, this is what the Bible says in Philippians 3.20, for our citizenship is in heaven. Are you listening? Our citizenship. Heaven, you know, the way heaven is is not the way the earth is. The way heaven sounds doesn't sound like the earth sounds. It's a total different planet, total different thing. And you've got to learn how to, first of all, see beyond the natural, but also you got to hear. I mean, I don't think I got time. I can tell right now by the clock. One, two, three. No, I won't I'll keep you here too long. If you come back Tuesday, I'll finish it. But anyways, <laughs> ah, hallelujah. I'll try. I'll try to get as far as I can today. Because I'm trying to combine two things here, sight and sound. All right, let me read 2 Corinthians chapter 3, chapter 10, rather, verse 3 is through 6. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Hmm. So now, thoughts, imaginations, are things that are rolling around in your mind. Reasonings, thoughts, there's a lot of sound going around all around us. There's the bad economy, the violent crimes, high gas prices, all these sounds going, going around. You know, and, then, and not only that, but there's, there's the sounds going around in our minds about what we think about ourselves, what we think about other people. You know, uh, also, what we think about God. That's why there's so many religions, because they got the wrong thought of God. Well, how do we know we're in the right stuff, Pastor? Let me, let, me, let me clarify that real quickly. The God of the Bible, not Allah, not Buddha, none of them devils, you know, none, uh, uh, hey, none of them. God says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the reason he says that is so that you will never be mistaken about who he is, the real God, the only God. The, he says, there are no other gods beside me. They pretend they're gods. But they're not. They're devils, some of them. Well, Buddha wasn't, but he was a person. But you know what I'm talking about. There's only one God. And there's no mistake. You're in the right thing if you believe the God of the Bible. Are you listening? And you better interpret it correctly because there's some people that use the Bible and they, 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 don't, they don't recognize the, the Godhead, but they, but they say they're the real thing. Well, the real thing is Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Ghost. And so now, he said here that all these things go on in your mind, all these reasonings. So now, we got to break through the sound barrier. You know, all that sound is going on in your head. You know, here's a story here. U.S. Force Captain Chuck Yeager became the first person to fly faster than the speed of sound. I think you got to fly 662 or something like miles an hour to go past the speed of sound. And many people back then believed that it was impossible, that man was not meant to fly faster than the speed of sound, and that, trans, you know, that transonic drag would tear an airplane apart. All that changed on October 14, 1947, when Jaeger flew the X-1 over Rogers Dry Lake in Southern California, and he broke the sound barrier. <clears throat> now, here's the thing. Jaeger reports, or he reported, he died a few years back, maybe in 2018, but he reported that right before he broke the speed of sound, or the sound barrier, his plane began to shake violently 
Man, he said he fear started gripping him. And that, that plane, he says, I, I thought this thing was going to fall apart until he said, I'm going to go through it. And he hung on to it. But once he broke through that sound barrier, he said, all of a sudden, everything was smooth. Everything was smooth. Wow. Amazing. And there are times, family, when we set out to believe and obey God. <laughs> and the sounds begin to happen. Sounds that begin to try to shake your faith. That's not going to happen. God's not going to help you. You're not supposed to do that. And then, you, and then when God tells you to do something, you say, Lord, how am I going to do that? I don't have the money. I don't have the education. How can I give God 10% and then pay my bills? I'm not going to do that, Lord. Why should I forgive somebody, you know, uh, that, that hurt me or that, or that lied about? Why should I do that? So, uh, shaking going on, thoughts going on, trying to shake your faith, trying to get you out of the, the breaking that sound barrier that's going on in your mind, trying to break through. But Jesus can break through. You know, there was a time when the disciples of Jesus they were out in that boat. They were gripped with fear. And this, it, because fear has a sound just like faith does. It has a voice. And it sounds, it sounds like Job 3.25, the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. But here's, here's the story here, and I'm going to probably stop at that. In Mark chapter 4, verse five, 35, it says, And the same day, when the even was come, he said unto them, Let us pass unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into that ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. It might have been my pillow guy. But anyways. <laughs> and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Don't you care? In other words. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? But notice what happened next. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? question is, how come they were fearful and had no faith? Can I tell you why? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. They let go of the word of Christ. What word was that? Let us go to the other side. They let it go. They let it go. They could have said, they, they, could, have seen, they could have seen that wind, or I mean, not seen the wind, but heard the wind and seen those waves, and they could have said, we're going to the other side. I don't care what those waves say. I don't care how that wind sounds. Jesus said, let's go to the other side. But they didn't. They let go of the word of Christ. So what did he do? He arose and rebuked the wind and said, peace, be still, and there was a great calm. Jesus broke that sound barrier that was going on in their mind, <laughs> and there was a great calm. He broke it. He was not about to let his disciples drown out in the middle of the Sea of Galilee because he said he's taking them to the other side. He's not about to let them drown. He's going to operate on his own faith and take them over there. And sometimes, family, you got to just tell Jesus to help you believe. Like that, We read that story earlier about that little boy. And, uh, and he told him, if you can believe all things are possible, if you can believe, and he's the... the the father answers back, and he, he, said, to, he said to Jesus, uh, with tears, he's crying, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. In other words, help me with my faith. How can you ask Jesus for help with your faith? Because Jesus is the author and finisher of your yeah. faith. <laughs> help me with my faith, Jesus. You know, because the devil trying to lie to me. All these circumstances. Because obedience, family, is the key to your breakthrough. Listen very close. How do you break through the sound barrier of anger, fear, guilt, depression, all of that? The Apostle Paul gave you the answer. We read it. He says, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience. Listen, here it is. When your obedience is fulfilled. When you obey what God tells you to do, it'll stop the storms. Like he said in Isaiah 119, if you be willing and obedient, 
you shall eat the good of the land. Jesus wants to take you to the other sides of the storm where there is peace, prosperity, calmness. All That's where he wants to take you. He doesn't want to take you into the rough stuff. You know, all he requires is that you trust him. He requires that you and never let go of your faith. Let me tell you, family, very plainly, never get upset at God and let go of your faith. Because when you do, it happens like it did to some people in the book of Timothy. He said, hold in faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. How do you let, how do you do that? Well, you got married, didn't you? Did you let go of that faith? I thought you said you loved that man. I thought you said you loved that woman. What happened? You let go. You let go. If something else began to talk to you, someone else began to talk to you, all that other stuff. <laughs> Are you listening? I ain't nobody listening today. Are you listening? You need to shut that stuff down. No, no, no. You got to have faith. You said we, this is forever. And if you want to look in the kitchen, gentlemen, there's a frying pan there that's <laughs> ready to hit you if you change your mind. No, I'm just kidding. But anyways, but you, you can't let go of that faith because it'll shipwreck your life, your marriage, your career. Uh, it'll shipwreck everything about you. You got to hold on to that faith. You got you to break through the sound barrier and the seeing barrier. And the only one that can do that is Jesus. Now, I'm going to quit with this. I saw this. I saw this story on, on one of those history channels. They actually have instruments that can balance your brain. It's called a BAUD, B-A-U-D, bio, um, audio something. I forgot. It's on my phone. So I don't have my phone with me. But anyways, and they put the, they put the headset on you and they, they dial it up. What it does, after a while, your memory begins to respond to that in a less negative way. And so they're tuning, they're tuning, your, they're, they're trying to tune your brain. That, that memory does, is not as painful anymore. It is, it's just a little device that they use. And then the government, because the, the government was using uh, another one where they would program people and try to create assassins. But uh, God has told us all along that only he can balance our brains and our minds. Amen. He said, be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you want your mind and your brain balanced, the only thing that'll do it is the word of God. That you may prove what is the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. I don't need a machine to balance my brain. Are you listening? All I need is the word of God and trust it that it's doing. So how do I get into that conformity to God's word? Because you can't say, you, you can't experience something until you do it. If God tells me to forgive, you know, I, I, I can't be renewed in my mind if I never be forgive. So once I forgive, then my mind is renewed in the area of forgiveness. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Because God said it. I, well, I don't feel like, well, then you, you didn't say anything. I told you about your feelings. God nothing to do with that. It's got to do a decision. I chose to forgive. God chose to forgive us. Isn't that true? And if you go to God and say, Lord, you know, you know what I did last week? Did you ask me to forgive you? Yeah, well, I don't know what you did. What do you mean? You're God. You know everything. No, I told you that as, long as, he, as far as east is from west, I will remember your sins no more. In other words, I won't bring them up anymore. So don't, don't ask me about it. Don't go around crying about it. I already forgave you. And you got to take that by faith. Amen. Because your feet say, well, I feel guilty. That's why you don't do anything for God, because you feel guilty. If you felt like you didn't do anything, you step up and say, all right, Lord, what's it you want me to do that? Praise God. Because you're not guilty. There's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. I trust you learned something this morning. Amen. How far can you see? Let me pray for the audience. Maybe you're here today and you've never made Jesus Lord of your life. Let's pray together. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. 
Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. Come into my life. Make me the kind of person I was created to be. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. And according to your word, I am saved. Thank you, Lord. Now, they're going to cut the feed right now, so if you're watching my internet, see you next week. Hasta la vista. We're going to receive God's tithes and offerings, but before that, I'm going, to, I'm going to share something with you. You know we've been talking about completing our audiovisual. We're, we're probably at the last piece of the audiovisual, the last couple of pieces. And this is a big one. This is a... Right here in the back of it is going to be a video wall. 